Hello Taurus, welcome to your reading. We are going to do your December predictions uh, and we're going to look at what's currently going on with you, um, situation that you're in, and then what's the highest outcome of that situation. And then we're going to look at advice and how to get you to that highest outcome. Okay, so let's begin. So what's happening with Torians right now? What's going on? What's going on in the Toroverse? Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, it looks like you're a happy squirrel this month. That's a good start. Happy squirrel. Okay, that's an extra, obviously, that's not a traditional tarot card. <laughs> that's just in this deck. There's a happy squirrel and a sad squirrel. So you got the happier one of the two. And you have the king of wands, page of pentacles, and the two of cups. Alrighty then. Well, this looks like to me... That, do you see how these two characters here are both holding a little prize? This guy's got the coin, this guy's got an acorn. So it seems as though you are taking charge of some aspect of your life here. So whether this be a relationship or this be a job, a creative project, your passion, whatever this is, a lot of you, it's going to be a passion. I mean, it's King of Wands, but this also is love. I mean, love is also passion. So this is something just very passionate. I feel there's something that you're very passionate about that you're finally going to be able to see rewards from, returns on, um, new beginnings bringing more prosperity in for you. It's going to make you very happy. You're going to feel more in charge of this um, aspect of your life. Uh, maybe just that things are going more smoothly. Uh, that you're gaining more wisdom, more experience, uh, yeah, more functionality. I don't know why that word is coming out, but that's what is there. So I'm gonna ex I'm gonna express it. <laughs> um, and we have the two of cups here on the end. So if this is a relationship for you guys, you guys are someone. Some of you are starting a new relationship. This could be with a fire sign. Does not have to be. But this is making you very happy. Um, this is a very new relationship for a lot of you, but it is, it is a good one. It is uh, definitely a good match here. Uh, this is the card of divine love. So um, for others of you, this is like a new uh, creative project that might be, it may be brand new, or it could just be starting to show you results, uh, physical results. Um, and this is just saying that this will, this is just confirming that this is a good partnership. This is a good match for you. Um, this is a good direction in which you are going, in which you are, you know, you're, maybe you're teaming up with someone or maybe this is a job offer that's coming in. And this is just saying that, yes, you can, you can go for this. This is a trustworthy thing. This is a trustworthy person. You can trust them. You can team up with them. This could be you and your lover creating a creative project together. And both, it, it just becomes very successful. It starts becoming very successful here. Um, so, yeah. So, let's clarify this and go a little deeper. All right. Happy squirrel. What are we so happy about? What are we so dang happy about? Okay, yeah. Creativity, working with others, manifesting a creative project here. Like there's something that you're creating that you're very excited about, you're very happy about, that's like starting to maybe like, oh, people are into it, people want to know about it, people are, you know, paying for this service, or so they're giving, again, here you have the Hermit, you have the Page of Pentacles, and you have the Ten of Swords. This tells me that you've been in a maybe a phase of 
self-isolation or just learning, um, learning maybe tough lessons here, but it's the end. See how these, you're sandwiched here. It's like, this is the end of maybe a tough cycle where it was a lot of tough lessons learned for you, but you gained a lot of wisdom here. You gained a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience. And so now it's finally time to begin anew, which is a page, is fresh energy, pardon me. And it's, it's, so it's a new start, a new beginning, a new offer, right? So now he has this, this golden wisdom here from all of these tough lessons, all of these past lessons learned. He is now has the nugget that the gold you could say from the, you know, shit that he has been through, right? He, the alk, the, the, it is finally alchemized. The shit has finally alchemized into gold. So he has been through tough lessons, but he has come out the other side victorious with this nugget of knowledge, wisdom, skill, or a, you know, a physical creative thing that now I have this, now I'm confident. I, I, I no longer need to be on this mountain. I can release the star. I can release this project out into the world. Now I have something of value to give. Okay, King of Wands. Death. Something's transformed. I think it, this is you. This is definitely you. In a lot of the cases here, if this is not you, if this is, a, this could be a lover, of course, as well, your other, but I feel for a lot of you that this process here has changed you, has transformed you. So we have death here. Death is a transformation. King of Wands is very, very confident, very, he knows that he does this thing well, that he is the expert, that you don't call anyone else. You call the King of Wands. If you want this movie directed, if you want this thing done right, you call the King of Wands, okay? Because the King of Wands, he knows, he has the taste, he has the fire to go at it. I mean, Taurus is your very ambitious, right? So you have the ambition. So you have now gone through these cycles, these tough lessons, you have learned so much. You now have this nugget of gold and you are now co coming into, you, are, you have transformed, you could say like a phoenix rising, right? We just had Scorpio season, which had a Taurus lunar eclipse and Taurus and Scorpio are sister signs, they're opposites, right? So whatever affects Scorpio affects us. So you may have been going through a phoenix rising moment, a butterfly moment where you have finally ended a cycle and now you are coming out to express your new self, to show the world this new nugget of information that you've found, whether that be about yourself. I am just, I have found a newfound confidence in myself. I love myself at a very deep level and that in turn will attract me to the right partner. Or I have, you know, learned certain lessons about this thing and now I can manifest my dream career or this creative idea or project. And now I have the confidence to literally let everyone know about it or to release it out into the world. I'm going to let people know I have this gift. I have this wisdom. I have this thing that I have to offer the world. I have a, a, a unique set of skills or I have a, you know, a very high value, way of looking at myself and I'm not going to accept anything less now, you know? Okay. So let's clarify this page. Yes, you have done a lot of learning here. Okay. You have the nine of wands and the seven of pentacles. The nine of wands is the wounded warrior. He has a bandage around his head. He's been through many tough lessons in the past. He's been through a lot of crap, okay? He has fought many battles and learned a lot. Um, he's a little weary because he's he's been through so much, right? 
but that's what we have to do is is this is very similar energy because seven of pentacles is looking at how can i make this yield even better for next year how can i turn this is great but how can i make this even better do i need to you know have more fertilizer more water different soil that kind of thing so this is looking at our past experiences and lessons learning from them so that we may become better so that we may have this better yield maybe maybe we have finally found you know the missing piece or the key in order to have the best crop uh that we that we can produce uh maybe i found that piece of information i needed from all of these failures or from all of these past lessons um, that I needed in order to make my crop the absolute best, myself the absolute best version of me. Maybe I saw something, these lessons, that's what they're there for. I mean, cycles and patterns, right? Ten of Swords is a big cycle ended. So it's like we've been through many, and you know, so everyone has, it's like we've been through many, many past lessons and experiences so that we may make ourselves better, so that we may make um, our creative abilities better, of whatever it is that we care about, what we're passionate about, we you know make those things better. And so that's what I'm seeing here. Um, and so good on you, you know. So two of cups. Hmm. I'm hearing no more lying, cheating, stealing. You're, I feel because you have, and I don't usually read reversals, but it came out like this, so I'm going to keep that in mind, right? Your relationships, because you have discovered this thing, you have learned this lesson, you have gained a new confidence in yourself, you've transformed yourself, and now you're a much happier, maybe more well-rounded um, individual, your relationships are no longer going to be the the kind of line cheating stealing i'm going to take from you uh all that i can and leave you with nothing or barely anything you are not going to put up with that anymore because you have gone through all these experiences maybe in relationships or in partnerships or in creative projects and it's like and you're like okay well i learned all that so what can i do next time and now it's like you're finally out of that out of that cycle and so no longer will you accept those dirty tricks or those people who don't have your best interest at heart or who aren't you know carrying their fair share and whatever relationship you want to put this in right it's like now i see now i've caught the pattern i've caught the cycle and i'm not going to repeat it anymore i finished with it I've decided that I'm putting maybe my self-respect first and foremost, my self-love, I'm coming first now. And so these relationships, if you want to meet me, I would love that. And I would love to have you in my life, but now I have boundaries. Now I'm not going to accept me overdoing it here and you barely doing anything or you taking all of the reward or all of the recognition. And I am just there on the side, like, you know, pushed off, uh, with, with nothing to show for it kind of thing. Okay. So yes, that is what I'm seeing for you guys, which is dope. Good for you. That is, it is a tough one to come across. You know, we, go, <laughs> we go through so many hard relationships or so many hard partnerships or try so many times. And then when you finally get it, you know, that's it. And then no more. And so there's only healthy relationships, partnerships, creative projects or you know uh even um employers because employers abuse the shit out of us too and they take more than they need and you know all that kind of thing so i feel like you're going to be able to recognize those things much quicker now and you're not going to accept them you're going to be like you know what this doesn't feel right i don't feel appreciated here and i i really respect and have a lot of uh confidence in what i do and in what i say and the things that i bring to the table and so no i i actually don't want to do this now i don't feel comfortable uh working for you or being with you because i know my worth now 
and that's just not going away. So sorry. <laughs> okay, beautiful. That's amazing. Good for you, Taurus. Okay, so let's take a look at the highest outcome. I mean, I feel like that is a great outcome on its own right there. <laughs> oh, we got temperance that just slid out. So we'll keep that in mind. Temperance, she's like very, very balanced, patient. She is an alchemist. So it's just being able to assess any situation and know exactly what you need to make the situation as best as it can be. Okay, highest outcome here for Taurus. Highest outcome of this situation for Taurus. Highest outcome. Highest outcome. Sorry if you can hear me burping a little bit. I'm like, just had food. <laughs> Okay, so we have strength. Uh oh, now we have sad squirrel. Okay, <laughs> your highest outcome is now becoming sad. Oh, this is so many cards. Okay. Okay, so this is you being represented here. The Knight of Pentacles. This is the, the earthly element here. You are an earth sign. So we have strength, the emperor, sad squirrel, Knight of Pentacles, justice, ten of swords, page of pentacles. We'll start from the beginning. Using your strength, your strengths, okay? Your strengths are going to help you to overcome any kind of sadness because guess what? We always are learning and in new cycles. So just because one ends and it ends in a good way doesn't mean we're going to not ever experience more negative, you know, cycles in our lives or, you know, any, any new you know, any negative emotion. It's like, because we've conquered one doesn't mean that we'll never experience sadness again, or we'll never experience dark emotions or, you know, um, karmic relationships or anything like that. Again, it's just saying that, so this is saying to, even when these things happen, take your time with it. It's okay. You don't have to, you know, avoid it or rush. And there's still huge treasures there's still more treasure to be found especially in the darkness especially in the tough emotions and cycles so this is just saying your outcome is you becoming an amazing leader a very uh fair honest just leader very balanced within yourself within your emotions because you have the courage and you have the strength to even take hard times, tough situations, and really alchemize them into a gift, into uh, something that you can use, something that um, will actually be a, a huge gift to you, a huge present to you. And it's like these, these tough cycles and stuff, they never end. They're always going to be there, but they help us to be balanced out. They help us to gain strength within ourselves so that we, we may be, you know, the best leader of our family or our projects, our, our work, 
with our business, whatever that may be. And this is just telling you to take it slow and steady. There's no, you know, no rushing or, you know, no, there's no bypassing this. We all have to overcome these, but we overcome them with fairness and just justice. Um, and even when, let's say, even when it's tough and we feel like this squirrel, we want to, you know, kick some ass or something like that, let's say. This is saying that even in those tough situations, we have to find the strength within us to still be fair, to still be just. And that is when we find the gold, okay? It's not to give in, like, just because I'm feeling sad, I'm going to, you know, throw everything away or I'm just going to let anger to get the best of me and then I'm going to burn a bridge or I'm going to ruin a relationship or I'm going to stab someone in the back whatever it's like even when we're feeling these things we still must be fair and just um and that will really yield the best outcome here for us that will give us the best gifts the best presents the best outcomes uh and to find the strength to go through these things with class with just uh justice on our side as uh you know a fair leader would as someone who Let's say you have a kid, you don't have to, but I'm just saying like, if you're teaching a kid, you know, you're not just going to teach them if you're having a bad day, ruin it for everyone or say whatever you want to say and it doesn't matter because it does matter. Even when you're mad, it still matters. It still matters when you're not mad. So we have to be careful of these, you know, of these behaviors, of these things and, you know, take our time, be, be easy on yourself, even when you're having a bad day, be easy on yourself, and know that you still have these, these gifts, that you don't have to, you know, you're not a bad person, because you maybe have fallen into a, a bad day, or a bad mood, or, you know, or even made a big mistake, um, there's always, you can always get out of it, you can always still find the lesson in it, and learn from it, and, and, continue on in a in a great way uh, and become more and more be better you know your crop will always become better especially with the hard ones that's when you get the the juiciest peaches right so okay i'm just going to clarify each row so strength and emperor Yeah, five of pentacles. Even when you're feeling lack. Uh-huh. This is pretty deep here. <laughs> um, so this is saying like using your strength even when you feel like feelings of insecurities feelings of loss or lack finding the strength in yourself to lead yourself out of these things to lead yourself into a, a more a more whole version of you to not give in to maybe these lower emotions or these lower um temptations where it's like oh but i'm not you know i'm really feeling lack today i'm really not feeling I'm not feeling worthy. It's just saying don't don't bring attention to your to your um, weaknesses here. Like this guy's a leper; he has to wear a, a a bell around his neck to let all the villagers know that he's coming through. And this is just saying that you are always whole. You are always perfect. You're always. This is how you should always look at yourself, even if you're feeling you know, these negative or these downer emotions, this is, it's like you're still whole, you're still perfect, there's nothing wrong with you, there's, and you have to be the leader and, and find the strength within yourself to always love yourself in a whole way, to always see yourself in the highest degree, even if, you know, these, these lower emotions have got a stranglehold on you, let's say. Or if you find yourself in a time of, you know, despair. 
It's like knowing that you have the skill to to lead yourself out of that. You have the emperor again. King of Swords and the Emperor. King of Swords is the master. He is a master. He's very honest, clear cut, very upfront about what he feels, about what he thinks. He sees things for what he, they truly are. He's not over emotional. He doesn't let his emotions override him or overrun him. And I think that is the main kind of message here. You also have, oh yes, a key ingredient here fell to this message. You have the Five of Cups. This is saying, don't allow your emotions, no matter how negative or how real they may be, to override your integrity. Even if, let's say, someone's pushing them like crazy, and this takes a lot of practice. It's not a, this is not super easy. You might not get this, you know, the first or second or third time. But this is saying not to dwell on these negative emotions. Don't dwell too long on, on the sadness or on the, you know, disappointment or on the ungratefulness of like, he's got three cups that spilled here, yeah. And he could just dwell on that all day, but he's got two cups behind him that are perfectly good. And if he looks behind him and notice these cups, he would notice that there's also a bridge to the castle. So these cups, appreciating and seeing these cups for what they are, will actually, if he took the lead, if he kind of just straightened himself out and said, I'm not going to focus on the darkness anymore. I'm not going to focus on what's going wrong here. And I'm, instead, I'm going to lead myself into a more uh, positive aspect or I'm going to lead myself into a something that's going to at least help me out, right? Dwelling doesn't help us out. It just, you know, it allows you to soak in self-pity, which is not a good, you know, leadership position. And I feel that you, you are starting to become a leader here. And you do need to kind of regulate your emotions in a certain way where it's like you can still lead yourself. You can still be that that you know great and fair leader even with when, when things go wrong or when things aren't you know the most ideal right it, we still need to to take the lead and to to be rational and to be logical and lead ourselves in a in a um, more productive way right than than soaking in our self-pity or or focusing on the negative too much right okay so justice in the ten of swords death yes transformation i've yeah i feel like transformation is such a big part of your outcome here i feel I mean, you definitely have the most cards from an outcome that has come out so far. So you are, your outcome is you going through many different aspects of yourself here, transforming many times, having to learn many lessons here, because I, I feel that you're going to be a big, uh, a leader here, um, maybe well known. I mean, this is the world, who knows? But you could be a, just a big leader of, this could just be of your own family even. But you are meant to learn these nuggets of information to share with others. This is Six of Wands is a card of public recognition. Excuse me. Queen of Wands knows her worth. She's confident. She knows what she does. She's transformed. She has had many deaths to become who she is today. To have this self-confidence, this self-worth, to not accept anything less. And that is why we have so many transformations. That's why we go through so many hard lessons, so many hard endings, so that we may transform, become anew, become better, um, and therefore become victorious in our endeavors, in who just we are as a human being. Maybe we become a better example for those around us. Maybe we don't fall into 
such dark, deep emotions or let them, and not to say not to fall into them because we all do, but not let them overtake you and control you. You controlling your emotion, you controlling, you know, where your, your life is directed and, and a find kind of the, the best way out of a situation. Um, yeah, it's like taking, taking things that you've learned and using them to, to your betterment and to the betterment of other people. Um, and not, yeah, like leaving people in the dust or leaving yourself, like letting your emotions like run rampant and, uh, and take over and then hurt people, you know? Okay. Uh, let's get some advice. Advice for Taurus. And yeah, and maybe even in that first part where it's a relationship, so maybe we were, or um, <laughs> I say we because I'm a Taurus myself. <laughs> uh, caught me. Um, so maybe we were the ones lying, cheating, stealing, or not being completely truthful, or maybe hurting someone else, right? In, in that, where it was the two of cups with the seven of swords, right? So maybe we weren't being truthful with ourselves or something along those lines and hurting someone, maybe not even by, on purpose, you know, but letting our emotions kind of run rampant. Okay. So any advice for Taurus here? Some advice. The emperor, you keep getting the emperor, man. Be a great leader. Step up to the plate. Lead yourself. Look at yourself in a very, you know, critical but loving way. Um, see what there is to improve upon with, you know, how you go about your daily routine how you would go about talking to yourself, treating yourself, treating those around you. Are you the best leader you can be? Are you the most fair and honorable version of yourself? And if not, how can you do that? How can you look at yourself honestly and critically and, and you know, step up to the plate in a new way, in a higher way? The chariot. Yeah, victory, going towards victory, making the moves that you need to make, going to the places you need to make, um, you need to go in order to you know, be that that great leader in order to get the lessons that you need. Eight of Swords, Three of Wands, and Two of Pentacles. Yeah, it's like even okay. Let's say we have some some behaviors or some mindsets that keep us trapped. They keep us still. Does it keep us from moving or be able being able to move on or to take the new opportunity or the next thing? How can we lead ourselves? How can we look at what, what's keeping us trapped? What is keeping you trapped? And then acting upon those, moving, moving towards freedom, moving out of, out of a, maybe a place situation or a mindset that's keeping us trapped or from not being able to evolve further, from not being able to have new experiences or experience more. And this is saying like, this also takes a lot of balance and look, we have the happy squirrel and the sad squirrel here. Wow. <laughs> so, and this is saying that they're both part of you. So don't hate on the sad squirrel or the happy squirrel. 
They're both equally equal parts of you and they both des deserve to be seen, to be heard, to be listened to. Um, and that one is not better than the other. They are, are both part of our, our experience here on earth. And it's to embody. And I really feel like the emperor does embody, you know, these two because he's very fair. He knows when to have fun, but he also knows when to be strict and when, and especially with himself, right? Uh, when to, when to um, discipline himself and others and when to play. And I feel that is a big thing. And, and maybe you're doing one or the other too much. And maybe you're not disciplining yourself enough. And it's keeping you stuck or it's keeping you in the same spot or not allowing you to evolve, to grow. Or, yeah, and I feel like there's a lot of experiences here out there for you to go after. And maybe this is like, don't stop yourself from experiencing these new uh, things to having these new opportunities or going after these new opportunities. It's like you're you have it within you to to lead yourself to lead your own life you don't have to wait for anyone else or anything to happen or wait till you're a better version of yourself it's like you can do it now you can go now don't don't wait like we'll always have these things we have to work on okay there we go we will we'll always have these things that we work on we'll always have times that make us sad that make us discouraged or that like ugly parts of ourselves that come up and it doesn't make you any less of a leader it doesn't make you any less whole you shouldn't stop yourself from going after the things that you want because you don't feel worthy because you still have some negative emotion or something that's like not perfect which none of us are going to get to okay because we are human beings it's like yes we are divine but we're also human beings and that comes with duality okay so you're not going to be perfect. Don't wait till the perfect time or till you're at the perfect stage to be a great leader, to go after the things you want, to have the experiences that you want to experience because you will always have Jekyll and Hyde, okay? You have to deal with both of them. You have to love both of them. Don't stop yourself from going after these things because you are imperfect. It's, you'll never go anywhere. You'll never do anything because you will always find the next lesson you always find the next thing about yourself that you have to improve upon and that's but that's part of it and then we still we still go on and you still have things to to teach people and you still have you know lessons to learn um and you can still teach people things when you are not a perfect being okay because even the best teachers are always learning so don't stop yourself from going out from having these experiences from being a leader from doing the things you want to do because you are imperfect, okay? You are perfect in your imperfection. Okay, Taurus, that's what I want you to know. And by golly, what a reading. Uh, that gave me a lot of insight on something that I've been working through. And so thank you so much for being with me here today. And yeah, this, is, uh, this was definitely an eye-opener for me. So I appreciate you guys being here. I thank you. And I hope that you take heed of this word. I don't know if that made sense. And, you know, still go out and be the leader that you want to be. Even, even when, you know, you're still working on yourself. Because that will never end, okay? We never, we never stop. So know that you are still capable and you have all of the tools that you need in order to get this done in order to show yourself, right? Okay. Thank you, Taurus. I will see you guys on the next one. All of my love. Peace.